Hello, everyone. I'm going to use this one single slide here to talk about everything that you need to know about the nitrogen cycle. And when I say everything that you need to know, what that includes are the different chemical forms of nitrogen throughout the biosphere, the different reservoirs and what the major reservoir is for the nitrogen, the cycling pattern going from one reservoir to another, the names of those different processes for the cycling, the human impacts, and in the case of this somewhat complicated nitrogen cycle, also the involvement of bacteria in the various different processes. So I'm going to start with where we do find most of the nitrogen in the biosphere, and that is in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, in the form of diatomic nitrogen, N2, two nitrogen held together by three covalent bonds that are kind of difficult to break apart. So this nitrogen in the atmosphere, you breathe it into your lungs along with oxygen and the other gases, but your body cannot use it in that form. You just end up exhaling that nitrogen back out again without really using it at all. So in order to get nitrogen in a usable form, we need bacteria and we also need plants. So in order for the plants to gain access to the nitrogen, they do need some bacteria. What these bacteria are going to do is they're going to grab onto that nitrogen in the atmosphere and they're going to convert it into a different form in the soil and in some cases in water as well. And what's going to be doing this initial conversion from the N2 nitrogen into ammonia NH3 are going to be nitrogen fixing bacteria. So they are going to take again the N2 from up in the atmosphere. It's going to go into the soil and these bacteria are going to convert it into ammonia, which is NH3. In the soil, this is just going to pick up a hydrogen and then what we're going to end up with is going to be the ammonium ions NH4 plus that we see down at the bottom here. Now this ammonia, it can be taken up by plants, it can be used by plants, but uh, plants are a little bit better at picking it up in a slightly different form. So then we can have another kind of bacteria referred to as the nitrifying bacteria. What these nitrifying bacteria are going to do is carry out the process called nitrification. And this is kind of a two-step process carried out by two different kinds of nitrifying bacteria. The first ones, these ones here, they're going to take the ammonia and they're going to convert it into the nitrite, which is NO2 minus, the ion NO2 minus. And then we also have some other nitrifying bacteria that are going to take the nitrites and convert them into nitrates. This is the form in the soil and in the water that plants love. This is the kind, really, that they pick up most readily and use. So they use it for their growth and nitrates along with phosphates are considered, to, considered limiting factors for plant growth. So plants need water, plants need carbon dioxide, plants need sunlight, Plants also need the, well, fertilizer, the nitrates, the phosphates, and potassium that they get out of the soil or out of the water. And this is the source of the nitrogen in the form of the nitrates. Now we just follow it up through the food chain. So those plants are going to be eaten by the herbivores, the primary consumers, and passing up through the various different trophic levels. So once it's in the biological organisms, it is converted into different forms. It's converted into amino acids that make up proteins, into amino acids that make up things like DNA and RNA. It can be returned back to either the soil or to the water through a couple of different mechanisms, through uh, feces coming from animals, coming from dead organic matter, so dead animals, dead plants. And when that is in the soil, we have this organic matter and we have some decomposers. So decomposers, of course, involved in the recycling of this organic matter. So they're going to take that nitrogen that's coming from the amino acids and the proteins, coming from the nucleic acids, the DNA, and they're going to convert it back into the ammonia. ammonia and then it can just complete this cycle again with the nitrifying bacteria, converting it to the nitrates back into plants and continuing on and on again. But you might recognize that that doesn't really complete the cycle because how does it get back up into the atmosphere? This is where the third kind of bacteria is going to come into play. So what do we have so far? Number one, first bacteria taking the 
Nitrogen in the atmosphere, N2, converted into ammonia. That is the nitrogen-16 bacteria. Second kind of bacteria, I'm going to put two down twice here. Nitrification here, nitrifying bacteria here as well. Nitrifying bacteria eventually converting that nitrogen into the nitrates. Third bacteria along the way here, this is it here. They are the denitrifying bacteria. And these are the ones that are going to take that nitrogen from the soil in the form of the nitrates and the nitrates and convert it back into the form that you find in the atmosphere, which is the N2, the diatomic nitrogen, and the, there's the arrow that we see it going back up into the atmosphere. Something else that I do want to mention with nitrogen-16 bacteria, not only are they soil bacteria, but they can also form symbiotic relationships with certain plants, and that is with the roots of certain plants. So on the roots of certain plants, and they are what are referred to as the legumes, so that includes clover, it includes alfalfa, peas, and beans that farmers might grow or that you might grow in your garden. So associated with these leaves and inside of these nodules, there are bacteria, and these are nitrogen-16 bacteria. And what they form is what's referred to as a symbiotic relationship. The plants get something, what they get is nitrogen in the form that they can use. These bacteria are going to take nitrogen from the atmosphere into and convert it into a form that the plants can take up. What do the bacteria get? Well, the plants are the producers, and they are going to be producing some carbohydrates that are going to be released into the soil, release that those bacteria can now access. So they're getting something as well, and that's why it is referred to as a symbiotic relationship. So, so far, what do we have? We have the different chemical forms, many different chemical forms that we have for the nitrogen. That's the N2 in the atmosphere, various different ones that we do find in the soil. But keep in mind, this is going to be in the water as well. The ammonia, the ammonium ions, the nitrates, and the nitrates. We mentioned in biological organisms. We have it in amino acids, in proteins, nucleic acids, in DNA, and in RNA. The major reservoir, again, is going to be the atmosphere, and we can see all of the different processes that are involved. So the nitrogen fixation, the nitrification, and the denitrification, all caused by these different bacteria. Now, in terms of human impacts, some really significant human impacts that we do have when we're talking about the nitrogen cycle. If we take a look at the far left-hand side, first of all, the burning of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels themselves don't necessarily have the nitrogen in them, but when you do burn fossil fuels at a high temperature, what happens is it sucks in that nitrogen from the atmosphere, and what it forms are some nitrous oxides, or sorry, some nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere. These nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere, they can react with water, and what they can form is acid. That acid will be nitric acid and nitrous acid, and when it falls back down, whether it's to the uh, ground or whether it's to the water, that is referred to as acid deposition. You may know it as acid rain, but it can be other forms of deposition as well. So that's a major concern with the nitrogen cycle. The vast majority of the nitrogen oxides that we find in the atmosphere are not naturally occurring. They are due to human activity. This, however, keep in mind, is not an impact on the nitrogen cycle itself in terms of the N2 and the ammonia, but it does certainly increase the amount of nitrogen in the atmosphere in terms of the nitrogen oxides. If we take a look at the right-hand side here, Fertilizers. What you find in fertilizers are the things, of course, that plants like and that they need to grow. And what that does involve is nitrates and phosphates. So we're talking about the nitrogen cycle here. So fertilizers do contain nitrates. These are synthetically produced. And the big concern is that in many cases they're used in excess. So whether it's by farmers for their crops, whether it's on golf courses, whether it's in cities, and individuals for their lawns, beautification. Typically, there is an excess of fertilizer that is used. And what does happen to it is it ends up in the runoff, which means it ends up in bodies of water. So whether it's streams, rivers, lakes, or the ocean, there is an excess amount of the nitrates. This is fertilizer, and what it encourages is plant growth. 
So in the water, if you do have excessive plant growth, you have more phytoplankton that are growing. You have more weeds that are growing. You have more algae that are growing. And what that leads to is what's referred to as two of two different names. This one here is eutrophication. And another name that it goes by all right up here is an algal bloom. In this case, referring specifically to the algae. So excess amounts of nitrogen. What's going on with the algal bloom? Well, the algae love that nitrogen. They gobble it up. They use it for the growth. You get an excess of growth of the algae in that waterway. Eventually, what happens, though, as with all living things, uh, they're going to die. And when they do die, what comes along are, down here, the decomposers, not only in the soil, in the water as well. So as that dead organic matter settles down to the bottom, decomposers are going to gobble it up. And from the carbon cycle, what happens with those decomposers is they're going to use up oxygen. They're going to produce carbon dioxide. But the big concern is they are consuming oxygen. So if you're using up the oxygen, then that means we're going to have a decrease in what is referred to as the DO, the dissolved oxygen, that you find in the water. An increase in what's referred to as the BOD. I'll write it up here. Increase BOD. Increase biological oxygen demand. Within that water, there's an increased demand for oxygen because all the decomposers are gobbling it up. So if you have an increased BOD, you have a decrease DO, a decreased dissolved oxygen, and that is not good for many other things that you do find in the water. That's not good for many of the invertebrates, the insects, and that's not good for the fish. Quite often the fish are eating the insects. So if the insects die, there's no food for the fish, and if the amount of oxygen drops off, this especially is going to be detrimental for the active fish, and that includes fish like trout that do require a lot of oxygen in order for them to survive. Just one other thing that I will mention here that I see up in the upper right-hand corner. This one here, nitrous oxide, is another uh, gas that is going to be released through agricultural processes. And along with carbon dioxide, it is also a greenhouse gas. So increasing this in the atmosphere, it is a heat-trapping gas that's also going to contribute to climate change and global warming. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the nitrogen cycle.